Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we will be looking at the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm freshly back from vacation, and Pastor Mac is now um, on vacation in Wyoming. I think we might have crossed each other. I was coming back from Colorado, and he was going to Wyoming, and so perhaps. But uh, it's a joy to be with you today, and let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away. You have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I've driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall there be any missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king, and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in a place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away into a boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages, and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. 
So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, last week we heard um, kind of a vicious text. It was about um, the death of John the Baptizer uh, when they had asked uh, for his he- for him to be beheaded. We think about that. Jesus had just experienced the death of his cousin, so did the disciples, and now um, they're going off to a desolate place to be by themselves, to rest for a while, to receive that Sabbath rest. We all need that Sabbath rest, a place to go off and to be alone and to find time to uh, receive so that we can then give to others, and that's what Jesus and his disciples were all about. However, when they got to that desolate place, the the crowds had found out that uh, where they were going, and so they went ahead of them. And when Jesus and his disciples got there, there was this mass crowd of people uh, waiting to see what Jesus would do again. Uh, They saw how he had healed, how he had um, how he had taken care of people, and and so they went ahead and they recognized him and brought all sorts of people with them. You'd think if you were off on vacation and wanted to get away and all of a sudden everybody had followed you, I don't know about you, but I probably would have hopped in my car and gone the opposite way, right? But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus looked and he had, here's the word for you, I want you to remember today, splachnan. Say it with me, splachnan. That word is a word that means it was in his inner guts. It's that feeling maybe that you've had when something's happened in your life, uh, perhaps the death of a loved one or somebody that you know that has gotten sick or you're facing some sort of medical problems, you have that, that feeling in your inner gut. It's called splachnan. That's the Greek word, and it means to have compassion. Jesus looked out on that crowd as a people who were dying. They were spiritually malnourished, they were vulnerable, Uh, they were open to the attack of spiritual predators, they were like sheep going astray, and his heart, his guts, literally went out to them. It probably may be the one of the most greatest Greek words of all time, shplachnan. It's an incarnational, or shall we say, fleshy word. Um, It's an example, it's an onop onomatopoeia kind of word. It, what, it, what it sounds like is what it really is. Say that word a number of times over and over again. Shplachnan, shplachnan. That verb is used 11 times in Mark's gospel. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had shplachnan for them because they were literally harassed. They were helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd are basically, we could say, dead meat. That's how much Jesus cared for him, for them. I don't know about you, but as you hear the crazy things that are going on in our world, um, all of the, the horrific things that happen as we listen to the news, um, shootings, all sorts of, all sorts of horrible things that go on. Um, the one thing that c- comes to mind is shplachnan. It's time for us as a people to have compassion, to look around to those who are in need. Who is it in your not life that needs shplachnan, that needs compassion? Maybe it's somebody that lives across the street from you or next door to you somebody that's going through a difficult time. Maybe it's somebody that shares an office with you or a classmate or something of that nature. Somebody that's going through medical issues. Somebody that has uh, suffered a loss in your family. Maybe it's somebody who's in a nursing home all by themselves. Somebody who needs shplachnan, who needs compassion. Somebody who is in pain and suffering and hurt. Who is it in your life 
Who is it in our world, in our family, that needs splachnon? Maybe it's time for us as Christians to take a deeper look and look at the confusion of the world, look at the loneliness that's in our world, and instead of looking in the eyes of judgment or looking the eyes of pride or arrogance, to look instead with splachnon, as Jesus did, to look at people who are like sheep without a shepherd. Maybe it's time for us as a church to look out for people in the eyes of mercy and love. That's what Jesus did that day. He had mercy and compassion. These people were desperate, and Jesus came, and what did he do in their greatest time of need? There was no food for them to feed. There was over 5,000 people, 5,000 men, not including the women and children. The disciples said, what shall we do? Maybe you've asked that question. Maybe the needs of people today are too great, and we scratch our heads and think, what can we do? There's so little that we have. Jesus says, you go find them something to eat. And what do they come up with? Five loaves of bread and two fish. But what are they among so many? Maybe we ask ourselves the same questions. What can we do as a church? Our resources are small. Maybe we don't have enough offering. Maybe we don't have enough people to go about. Jesus says, you feed them. And so they come forward with five loaves and two, five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus takes those five loaves of bread and two fish. He breaks the bread. He gives thanks and he passes it to his disciples and he gives it to them and he has them sit down in green pastures and they pass it out. And guess what? There's enough food for those 5,000. In fact, there's more than enough. They had 12 leftover baskets full to give out. So here's the deal. We always have enough with Jesus. There's always more than enough of his gifts to give out. A prayer that we pray at our family dinner it comes from one of the Psalms. Lord, open uh, the eyes of all. Look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living creature. God has more than enough to give out. Here in his church, he gives us the greatest gift of all. He gives us his son, Jesus Christ, who when he died on the cross said, Father, forgive them, not just some of them, but all of them. God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God comes and gives those gifts to us each Sunday. He still breaks the bread. He takes the cup of blessing and he says, take and eat my body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. There's always more than enough with Jesus, more compassion, more love for those who are in need. It is my prayer that you, as fellow believers in Christ, look with the eyes of Jesus upon our world. Look in compassion and love instead of judgment. Look with the eyes of compassion with those who need it the most, the most unlovable, the most vulnerable. Invite them to come to Jesus. He will never let anyone go away empty-handed. That's his promise. Just see what he did for those people that day, how he had compassion, splachnon, and mercy. And so he has that splachnon and mercy, not only for you, but for your family, for your friends, for this whole community, for the world. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. My prayer for you today is that Jesus would give you those eyes, that gut to have compassion and love that he had, to invite those who have not yet known Jesus to come, to feed, to eat, to be satisfied, to receive those gifts of salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, 
and uphold me with a high free spirit. Amen. The hymn that I'd like to look to today is a hymn of that we normally sing at the Lord's Supper. I just had it. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, Thomas. That's right. Here it is. Um, it is hymn 641. We are not actually singing this hymn on Sunday, but I think it fits the text well. Hymn 641, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. See you in church on Sunday.